Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on wherever you find yourself in the world today. I'm your host, Amy Leo, and you're listening to what we should have learned in school. So you've probably in your life come across folks that really urge you to, you know, get it out. You know, you've got to vent or else if you bottle your emotions up, you're just going to explode one day in a crazy rage. But the problem is our emotional system doesn't work this way. And the biggest problem with catharsis when it comes especially to anger is that it actually doesn't work. Uh, the research has found that it doesn't do anything to release uh, negative energy or stress, that actually it only sustains feelings of anger and makes it more likely that someone is gonna engage in vengeful behavior to the person they think has wronged them. And so a gentleman named Brad Bushman really shined the light on this uh, in the 90s when he started running experiments testing to see that, you know, if participants vented, if they punched a pillow, you know, would it create a sense of dissipation of anger or not? And so, for example, in one of the studies, um, <laughs> he had folks write an essay on something, and then they believed that another student was grading them. And half of the folks got the feedback, this is the worst paper I've ever read, you know, something like that. And so one group was um, punching a pillow to vent and release their anger, and another was just kind of left alone to cool off. And the group that punched the pillow engaged in much more vengeful acts against the person they thought graded them. For instance, they were told that they were now gonna be in a competition with the person that graded them, and all they had to do was press a button faster, and that the loser of that would get blasted with a very loud sound. Now, the participants could choose how loud that their kind of adversary or how loud of a sound that the person they thought gave them that that unfavorable remark would get blasted with and that scale went up to 105 decibels which is like standing next to a jackhammer and the group that was punching the pillow believing in catharsis right they were getting out all their anger uh, they actually chose for their other person the person that graded their uh, paper I keep wanting to say their nemesis but I, I wonder if that's how they envisioned it I'm not sure um, but the person that they believe graded their paper they set the volume to 8.5 on a scale of 0 to 10 whereas the group that were just left to calm down cool down uh, set the volume to 2.5 on a scale of 0 to 10 I mean that's a pretty substantial difference in, in vengeful behavior, in sustaining anger. And so I'm gonna post some links to the research because I can't sum it all up here within you know 10 minutes, but I do invite you to play around this idea that catharsis, the need to purge unwanted emotions, um, doesn't really apply to us because we're trying to apply that to a moment-to-moment -moment emotional system that's always at work. You know, we, we think that works because physically it works. Certainly if we drink too much alcohol and we feel poisoned and weighed down, we, we expel it usually, right? We throw up or, um, and that usually feels good and usually gets the toxins out. Um, but, but again, I really invite you to question if the emotional system, the psychological system of human beings works the same way, especially because it does seem to be a moment to moment system that is very much influenced by our current state of mind much more than even past events. It really is an in-the-moment system. And so another element of catharsis, which um, to me it doesn't really make much sense in our modern day world, you know, with the knowledge that we now have, is the idea that you have to talk about the past in order to heal from it. And I want to respect your experience. It could be that you have done psychotherapy in this way and, 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 and dove into the past and you feel much better for it now. Um, but, but the issue with this is that talking about a problem over and over again can lead to rumination. And rumination leads to depression. And rumination, when people are stuck in that cycle of habitual negative kind of thought loops, it also makes it less likely that someone will actually solve the problems they're up against. You know, when we're ruminating, we're really tricking ourselves thinking we're solving the problem. Um, but in fact, we're just again caught in this kind of endless rat race internally that, that research has shown makes us less likely to solve problems and more prone to depression. And again, like venting anger, talking about things feels good. But 
I'm not sure if it's really the act of talking about it that's really helpful. What, what seems to me uh, to provide the impact is if you're sitting with someone that's really valuing you and really listening to you and, and, and then it kind of creates a sense of, of being valued and heard and loved and, and kind of floods this positive connection to human beings and positive emotions that occur within us. I have to interrupt the regularly scheduled program because after I recorded this episode, I came across new research that would support the theory of why talking about it can feel good, but that we don't necessarily have to talk about things in order to feel better. So I came across a study on crying, and crying is something we often think is undoubtedly therapeutic, that it has a cathartic benefit, but... That research showed that it is very much dependent on the reactions of other people as to whether or not a person will get a therapeutic benefit from crying. You know, furthermore, crying or watching a sad movie in people that are showing symptoms of depression or anxiety doesn't really hold much of a therapeutic benefit at all. And so we've thrown out a lot of information today. What are the take homes from today's episode? Well, number one, we can draw the conclusion that emotions don't actually build up inside of us. Our emotions are constructed in the moment within the brain and not stored there. Therefore, the whole idea that emotions need to be released doesn't really make sense. And we showed that when it came to the fact that venting doesn't actually get rid of anger, that it only sustains it. And that talking about problems or painful past situations can actually lead to rumination, which makes it less likely that the person will solve the problem at hand and more likely that he or she will become depressed. The second conclusion we can kind of draw is that, you know, emotions always change. Again, if it's a moment to moment system, we don't have to manipulate our emotions So it means we don't have to worry about artificially bottling our feelings up because the truth of the matter is it's difficult for any person to naturally stay in one emotional state for very long. However, perhaps because we believe we have to do something to feel better, we have to vent our emotions, we have to talk about it, we have to have a good cry that we don't realize all the effort that it's taking us to maintain those angry or sad emotions. And we keep bad feelings alive in many ways, you know, some of which would be thinking about just how awful what that person did to us was, you know, imagining what we should have said. Oh, why didn't I say that? That would have been perfect, right? I've had those thoughts before. I don't know if you have. Uh, We keep the bad feelings alive by planning what we're going to say next time we see them. So you're in a disagreement with your partner and you told them, you you know, we need to talk. And then all day at work, you're just thinking of all the things that you're going to say and make sure that you don't forget something to say that's important, right? So, I mean, all this leads to rumination and harshly judging ourselves and others or kind of being obsessed in our mind of looking for ways to vent, like, you know, squeezing a stress ball or punching a bag or going to the gym. So here is my question for you today. What if emotions are not problems to solve? What could happen if you let your emotions run their natural course more often and didn't make so much meaning out of them in your life? I invite you to openly reflect on this. Is it at least possible that you prolong painful emotions longer than is necessary by thinking you always have to vent in order to feel some relief? And again, I'm not saying that, you know, you should never talk about your feelings, but uh, again, looking to that as a way to somehow relieve emotional distress uh, may be misguided and there might be a different way. Well, that's all I have for today. We're going to talk about this again next week um, because this is such a um, 
tricky topic for us to explore and wrap our heads around that years and years and decades even of cultural conditioning that says that we need to vent, uh, that we, we shouldn't bottle up our emotions. Uh, we're, we're really questioning that and that takes some time to really analyze and kind of detach from that idea to let a new possibility come through. Again, my name is Amy Leo. You're listening to What We Should Have Learned in School, and I'll see you again next week. You can learn more about me and the work I do in the world at amyleo.com. Until next time, stay curious, take care of yourself, and keep rocking.